Hello friends, in today's video we've got 10 early gameplay tips for you to take into the teal mask, give you the best experience possible when you're starting out with these games. So as of recording this video, the Teal Mask DLC dropped about 12 hours ago now. I've finished everything in the DLCs and I've had a good chance to kind of sink my teeth into the majority of things that you'll be doing when you first start exploring Kitakami. Hopefully throughout this video, you'll get some good tips to make the experience a lot better. And if you've got your own tips, please leave them in the comment section below for others to pick up on so they can have as best experience as possible. And also before we get into everything, I'm just going to say that we are going to keep this as spoiler free as possible. I'm not going to be talking about the story or anything to do with the Teal Mask DLCs in that respect. These are just general tips and things to help improve your gameplay and be aware of when you're going into the Teal Mask for the first time. So when the DLC for the Teal Mask dropped, we also got a big update for Scarlet and Violet. 2.0.1 was the latest update and with it became a lot of new features that you might not be aware of from the patch notes in particular. One of the first things we're going to just talk about when you come into the DLCs itself is just heading into your settings options because you're going to have a lot more options in regards to your camera functions going to have vertical camera control so you can change these to regular or inverted you've got horizontal camera controls as well as well as camera support on or off now you've got camera interpolation which is going to be picking up the speed in which you're moving around with your camera and making sure that it is able to snap things when you're out and about around the paldea or even in kitakami so you can change this to slow or normal to kind of suit what kind of pictures you're taking so you get better quality and then you've got camera distance as well. So you've got close, normal or far. The close is just the default one that it's on. And these are your different options that you can play around with to give yourself some better angles, some better pictures and some different things from what you'll maybe seeing your friends doing. Now, another new option that we do have access to is actually when our Pokemon are walking beside us. Uh, normally, if you're trying to take a picture of your Pokemon, if we see here, if we try and take a picture of Breloom, it might not stay still for very long or it might hop around depending on the Pokemon. So it can be quite annoying to actually take a picture of your Pokemon and wherever you go, it will follow you around. There is a new function. If you use the left analog controller and you just press it into the joypad. So you just press it in. You'll see beside the Pokemon, there is a hand kind of signal coming up. And this means that the Pokemon now is going to stay static it will stay in its same place now no matter what you do you can run around run away from it and i don't know how far you can get away from it but it will stay where you've left it and it will do what it's told so there is a max distance that you can have the pokemon stay out for when you you throw it out from uh, how far you can go away from it but as long as you do that function where the hand comes up which is a, almost like a whistle uh, the Pokemon will stay static. So it just gives you a better option now of taking photos of it. So you can go in and you can take a really nice photo and you know that the Pokemon is not going to move as well. I'm just going to move my camera out of the way just one moment as well because you've got the filter option and you've got another option on top of this as well. So if you press your ZL or ZR buttons, you can flick through music and the music will change depending on what you do. So if we ZR, we've got a happy tune here and Brilliant will kind of interpret its mood um, based on the music that it's playing. So you got happy there, you got angry here. So this is more of a, a battle pause or an attacking pause from the Pokemon, which is pretty cool. So if you want a picture of it attacking or battling, you can get a nice snapshot there. You can toggle along again. And this is more of like the drowsy, the sleepy one. So if you like taking pictures of your Pokemon asleep, this is the music that will always put them to sleep. And then you can take the, the music off and it will go back to normal. So when you come out, the hand will disappear and it will follow you around again until you press that L analog stick into your controller and then it will stop once again. You can do this with all Pokemon. So this is a really nice feature for being able to kind of take pictures and stuff like that. The other new facility that we are and do have access to, which we know about from the official trailers, is the access to the roto stick which you're going to get pretty early on in your in your playthrough so uh, if you're in this screen here you can use the y button to put it onto selfie mode and then using the x button will give you the roto stick which will give you kind of the selfie stick and it'll give you a bit more of an option to 
move around in a bit of a different view as well if you've got friends that you want to get in the picture with or if you've got a pokemon as well that you want to kind of get in the picture with with you and your pokemon if we can find breloom there in the background so you see you can kind of position yourself in a way and you've also got some new kind of uh expressions as well we've got this expression which is new and this one which is new which we haven't had before we previously only had these six so you've got two new expressions that you're going to be able to use with your photos and your eye control as always uh, is normal but then you can just flip the camera around again and if you flip it back it will be back to kind of the selfie mode like you've seen before but with that expression which you can kind of change and do your eyes and all sorts of things so you've got a lot more freedom with the camera now and you've got a lot more kind of customizable features with it as well which is really good and this all courtesy of this latest 2.0.1 update and if you want to take the hand signal off and you want your Pokemon to follow you again, all you need to do is press down again with the left analog stick and it'll whistle and your Pokemon will follow you around and that hand signal next to the Pokemon will disappear. Now, another new feature as well that we've got is the TM machine. So the TM machine now has a new filter system where you can filter just learnable moves so if you go into it normally you're going to get a full list of every single tm by its different type uh, of course you can toggle this with the y button to just show the different list of moves rather than the pictures uh, but you do see the ones that are craftable now as well next to the tm so you don't need to go onto the tm itself to see if you've got the the right amount of material to make it you can see from an overview point of view with here where you can see okay i've got uh, spikes here and i know it's craftable so that is a really really good resource to to take advantage of but the other thing is you can click and toggle on in this screen to a learnable only move so if we say we want to just see what tm's brillium can use and what can we craft you can press the x button in this screen and then select a Pokemon. So we'll select Breloom here, and then we'll go to all TMs, and we can see a full list of every single TM that Breloom can learn, and we can go down, and you can do this with every Pokemon as well. So if we finish with Breloom, and we want to have a look at Azumarill, we can do the same with Azumarill, where we don't need to toggle that on again, but we just need to select Azumarill here, and with all TMs selected at the end here, then we can see exactly what TMs it can learn. And we can even filter it down further by type of moves that Azumarill can learn. So you can see here it doesn't learn any electric, but it does learn some grass type attacks. So just back out of this a couple of times and it gets us back to that normal screen. If you want to go into that just from the start, there is an option here. I want to filter for learnable moves and then you can go into that. And then you just select the Pokemon rather than going into the main screen. So you've got a couple of options with how to do that. But just makes things a little bit easier. A nice quality of life update for you to go into the games with. Especially if you are kind of leveling up your Pokemon or training them up as you're playing through the Teal Mask. Now another tip when you are playing through the Teal Mask is to make sure that you are picking up every single item that you come across. You're going to come across some really rare high cost items as well as lots of level up candies and in particular lots and lots of TMs which are going to be all around the region. Kitakami feels for some reason like it's just an absolute treasure trove of items that you're going to be able to pick up around the area so when you're playing through the games make sure if you do see any of the sparkly objects on the floor to pick those up. They can range from anything to do with level up candies like we've already mentioned to evolution items which are going to be really useful for completing your Pokedex. And while you're at it, picking up everything that you come across on your travels, make sure that you do catch everything as well that you come across because it is gonna be a difficult task to complete the Pokedex. Um, it's something that you probably already do, but it's something that I will remind all of you that it made it so much easier for me to complete the Pokedex when playing through these games was to just make sure that I was catching every single Pokemon that I came across. And then because of the level capping, when you come into the teal mask for the most part you're going to be able to kind of get the evolution of that pokemon with just a rare candy or maybe a medium or a large level up candy that you might have in your bag from preparations coming into the teal mask meaning that you're going to be able to kind of complete full evolution lines if you can catch that first evolution making completing the pokedex a lot easier of a task rather than doing it after you've finished the whole storyline of the games. So this isn't too much of a spoiler and doesn't really affect the storyline at all. 
but Terror Raids will be making a return in Kitakami, so you're going to be able to access Terror Raid Dens throughout your playthrough. Now, if you complete your game in Paldea, these range from anything from 3, 4, 5, and even 6 star Terror Raids in Kitakami. So just make sure if you are going past any Terror Raids to take advantage of them. Go in, do the Terror Raid, because a lot of the time they're going to be Pokemon that might be a bit difficult to obtain they might be pokemon that you need to get by trading to evolve otherwise and by just going into a terror raid den where they're available and you can beat them and catch them and it saves you having to trade the pre-evolution of that pokemon to get the evolution that you've just caught in the terror raid a lot easier so make sure that you do check out the terror raid dens when you are going around kitakami it will make completing that pokedex a lot easier one thing I didn't do when I was going through my playthrough was actually taking advantage of the Pokedex rewards as you go through the game. Because there are some special rewards that you do get when you have hit a certain threshold on your Pokedex. You've caught a certain number of Pokemon in the Kitakami Pokedex. And those items would be really helpful for kind of progressing through the rest of the Pokedex. Evolution items and other specific items that are going to help you obtain other Pokemon are going to be really kind of crucial within this mix of rewards. So make sure that you are keeping up to date with those rewards as you go rather than doing them all at the end like I did because it made it a lot harder than it really needed to be in the end. And the final tip is to just take your time with the game. It isn't a long DLC. You can probably blast through it in a few hours if you're really just running through the games but it is a great storyline. There is a lot to do in these games. Just take your time and enjoy it while you're doing it. There's no rush to finish these games. You've got a long wait, probably for the Indigo Disc to come out. So you've got a long time to enjoy Kitakami and the Teal Mask. So just make sure that you are kind of soaking it all in when you're playing it and don't rush through it. There's no rush. You've got plenty of time in the post game to do all the extra things that you're kind of wanting to do shiny hunting farming raids etc like that you've done all the hard work in paldea it's time to just relax in kitakami enjoy the new pokemon that you've got access to and submerge yourself in this brilliant dlc pack that we've now got access to so that is everything for today's video i hope these early game tips are really useful for you going into the teal mask and of course if you've already played through the dlcs and you're watching this and you've got your own tips and hints for new players coming into the dlc please leave them in the comment section below for those players to come in and pick up some much needed tips for going in and having a much more enjoyable playthrough thank you so much for tuning in to today's video if you found it useful please drop a like do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our pokemon scarlet and violet content and i'll see you all in another video very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye